Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. <clears throat> um, I wanted to make a video about uh, Zoroaster or the religion Zoroastrian. Um, basically, let's start by talking about the history and some of the belief system um, or the principles of the the pillars of like uh, Zoroastrian faith, if you will. Basically, uh, I've watched a lot of uh, videos in addition to my own uh, learnings and teachings from my parents or so. I was born in a Zoroastrian family in Iran. And um, in, yeah, I was born in Tehran. My mom is from Yazd. Uh, she was probably, she's, she's still alive, <laughs> yeah. But uh, she's like, um, um, like one of the true Zoroastrians, if you will, the original Zoroastrians, like the last generation, I would say, because even I, um, I don't practice or I'm familiar with the faith uh, the same way like she was. I just want to give you a background, uh, basically, like uh, for example, when I was growing up, uh, I remember every once in a while we had like a um, what they call uh, Gohan Bar. Gohan Bar basically, uh, it, it's, a, it's a festivity basically, or some kind of uh, festivity that people will gather and uh, they have uh, basically they, they, uh, um, they celebrate and at the same time they pray. It's really a worship and a celebration at the same time coming with a feast and you know so forth. It's a very beautiful tradition but uh, given how uh, the uh, Zoroastrian community is so, uh, if you will, the diaspora basically, it's so segregated. It's not segregated, it's a segregated in a sense of geographic, I, will, I would say. Um, and I think geography and the fact that um, there's also very few followers in the world as we speak, uh, not to mention like 20. 20, 25 years ago, when I was growing up in Iran, um, it was a lot fewer than what it might be today. Or actually, maybe back then, it was fewer than what it is today. We're just, uh, it's funny, you don't appreciate something until you have it. I think it ha actually has dwindled a lot worse uh, than what it used to be. But back then, we were like, really like, oh my God, we just have such a few people. Anyway, so in our house, we, my mom used to always uh, create like a, uh, she would uh, put a cloth uh, that uh, she would have in the kitchen and she would have these items that are religious items. She would put them together and she would have a celebration basically and she would recite the prayer. And I remember also on top of that, uh, we had this thing where um, like um, every year, every day of the month, for example, has a, has a name into it. Um, and uh, she would know. Uh, we actually we used we had a calendar too, and I think we I can find it probably online too. But that's what I'm saying. I'm not really practicing it. However, I am probably I would say the last generation, if you will, um, my generation, if you will, the people who basically are from my time, uh, born in Iran. We are the last generation, perhaps who. Uh, there, there are uh, the Rastians in Iran still that uh, I think uh, they actually continue that thing the way that uh, like my mom used to do it I think uh, matter of fact my cousins uh, they still live in Iran and they have their children there and I think uh, to a large degree they do a great job um, that really getting their children to practice and become aware of it and uh, I'm so happy about that even though we are very few hopefully one day Things will change. That is my hope. Uh, that is, I'm hoping things Iranians will restart thinking <laughs> about their past and what they used to be, and the fact that they had some messenger from their own homeland who, for the first time in history of mankind, as we know, spoke of one God. But funny is that the foreigners who uh, came up with the idea of you know, Judaism, Christianity, 
and uh, uh, Islam seems to be they're, they're more gravitated towards those people versus their own uh, prophet that actually way before any of those uh, spoke the, the, the mission or what uh, those uh, religions idolize as their achievement or as their you know breakthrough as like oh like you know putting the all the gods to the side anyways but um so yeah and every matter of fact uh, when the name of the day by the month for example coincides that would be a day of the gohan bar where which is a day of the festivity basically or celebration if you will so um that's for example those are things and, and like she, she would very likely once a week at least she would do a very thorough like a uh, long you know prayer it was very amazing i think uh, and i think she had uh, by far a lot of influence on me in terms of my spirituality and my value system that is or wrong or right really which uh i'm very i, I do identify with it i think i wish the uh, however there were more people like me around that they also believed in the same uh, values and uh, I could harmonize with them. Unfortunately, there are very few people and the ones that do exist are unfortunately a lot of them um, being Zoroastrian or other reasons. Because I, I, mean, I mean, I don't believe that you have to be follow a certain religion. It's really about the message, about the values. And, uh, but when I've looked around, whether being the Christians or Muslims or, you know, Jews uh, or vice versa, anybody, you don't even have to have to pray in God to basically, like I said, it's not about the belief, it's about the values. And I haven't seen that many people. And if they are out there, unfortunately, I've, uh, oftentimes I found them very close minded, rather um, very radical, radical in a sense, like, you know, uh, not like necessarily like Muslim stereotype radical if you will that America portrays like they're trying to blow everybody no that's not what I'm saying like Christians here oftentimes if I want to join them and talk to them they'd be like so are you Christian I'm like um well yeah I I believe in Jesus and I agree with them and uh I think uh I, I'm, in, I'm in line with his message it's like no well you have to be Christian like for example um like especially in, like perhaps in relationship in sense of relationship which i found it really interesting like you would think in a country like america at least people would have a better sense a more moderate uh, if you will uh, view trying to really incorporate that in those values but it's really not uh, unfortunately it's really a, one side of a extreme you're either like totally off the track and you're just a wild creature who doesn't want to uh, abide by anything other than the stick that is the law you know it's like yeah don't drink and drive because you're gonna go to jail but wait are you saying i'm not gonna go to jail if i don't fucking you know <laughs> have to marry somebody uh no you have that freedom so yeah <laughs> i do that no problem <laughs> you know that is unfortunately the way that uh the man's mind works and on you have on the other side the people that speaking of radicals and for example really the way that they believe in that is really uh, it's really i mean i guess i do it some ways too but i think it's really the fear of punishment or then again some kind of a punitive action if you will some kind of a, a consequence if you will it's really not their own belief um I saw that they have a principle. Anyways, I don't want to get into that. But I just like I said, I just wish there were more people who were really in line with mine, and I could really, if you will, harmonize with them. Anyways, back to the what I was saying. So, so this man, you know, by best accounts that we know of, about uh, by the linguistic records that is they, they matched and the. Um, the ling the language of uh, the gathas or the gods as you might say in English um, gathas or by the way um, by West we know are the original uh, um, words of Zoroaster that he has written down or has been passed on 
but by a large degree we would believe that he was the one that he uh, basically recited these messages if you will or these uh, poetry I'm not sure if we can call it messages um, Zoroaster by far it's very interesting I think if you want to compare it he very clearly states that you know uh, I don't have any uh, miracles I don't have any uh, wonders I don't do I've never done any of those I'm not going to do any of those if anything my miracle is my message is peace and trying to unite people and bring them together and making people live in a happier wiser life and uh, so anyways about 3500 years ago by the best we know that uh, approximately he comes out uh, and after uh, questions rise in his head about the world he goes into seclusion into the mountains and he lives in mountains for like 10 years and when he returns from the mountains he speaks of his god um, Ahura Mazda the god that he calls Ahura Mazda and Ahura Mazda basically literally if you translate means the word of wit the lord of wisdom or the source of wisdom it's very amazing if you want to compare that to uh, who can believe it? We're in 2000, year 2020, and still, instead of having grown in something much better, we live in by far a darker time in the history of mankind. <laughs> How obviously the ruling society and the, the elites and politicians have managed to keep us in that track. That's, hey amen, that is a miracle right there. <laughs> I know the capitalists really do pray to them and find them the real prophets, but uh, yeah, so we'll get back to that, I guess, in other videos. Maybe they are right. Well, they're not right because they're doing it in a, in a very dastardly, in the name of injustice and doing pain and um, devastation to other people. There's nothing right about that. I mean, if it were just to, to create a, uh, a uniform system around the world where everybody has free ways of trying to uh, access the market and be able to bring in what they are best at that would have been an amazing world but that's not how our world is um, the the primary speaking the anglo-american brotherhood uh, empire you know creates the uh, fake enemies and you know adversaries around the world to really try to pose them as the enemy of them and as the solution the only way around would be to just go and try to knock them out and uh, to save America and their, the Anglo Western civilizations that's been always danger actually going back by the very Persians <laughs> you know being portrayed as the the people who first gave rise to civilization civilizations in by best accounts, if you know of, uh, we are considered like the enemy of the civilization. Anyways, that's another story. But yeah, so um, immediately after coming from the mountains, he starts to uh, basically preach his message. And uh, the, one of the first things that he does, he goes to the uh, the king, the uh, the Persian king, uh, whose name is. Uh, there's very various names for him. Is uh, one is the Vishtasp, uh, one is also uh, Jamasp, uh, if you will. Excuse me, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, Gushtasp, excuse me. Um, Gushtasp, uh, yes. So, and uh, he uh, basically uh, asked the king to hear what he has to say, and uh, the king actually likes what he says, and he actually becomes. Uh, Zoroastrian, he believes in his message. Uh, by the way, the proper way of saying Zoroastrianism, uh, other than the etymology, is really not calling them Zoroastrianism. Uh, the proper way of saying it is the um, the um, the doctrine, if you will, or philosophy of. Or better, I think it would be better to call it doctrine. Is a doctrine of been uh, using wisdom that's a literal translation if one of one had to um, to translate it and thinking and wisdom basically choosing the right path is the most renowned worship of all 
it's not necessarily that you do an elaborate prayer or anything like that. The fact that you're a good person is by far, your deed is viewed as the most renowned and honorable uh, act of goodness that is praiseable and is worthy of anything, uh, by far beyond anything of uh, any other nature or anything else. So this is uh, something that I, I really want to put out there. And uh, so, yeah, once that happens, um, uh, by we don't, I don't know exactly, and I think a lot of people we don't know by far. I should probably look into that, but um, slowly, apparently, Zoroastrian faith takes off and becomes a very um, well accepted belief among the Persians, and not only the Persians, at some point, um, also. The, the believers of uh, uh, the other lands, uh, because uh, at part you have to understand that the Persian Empire was very massive. And uh, now, just one thing that comes to my mind, this is very integral. Um, and we actually paid a heavy price for this. And that's why I think we are where we are now. And I'm speaking of myself as a Zoroastrian, because we promoted tolerance and democracy it wasn't that people going around being like this is one thing that the persians unlike other you know tribes or other empires they did not commit they didn't go around forcing people to change their religion to become zoroastrian or whatever whatever their belief was matter of fact it's interesting that uh Zoroaster, the fact that he speaks of one God, one of the most fascinating things that he also at the same time does is that um, he does not, uh, if you will, uh, deny other theories, uh, primarily speaking Mithraism, that was a very popular uh, theory and a, and a a, a goddess among the Persians and non-Persians. Uh, matter of fact, the Roman soldiers up to prior to rise of Christianity were Mithras. Uh, not only the Roman soldiers, Mithraism was a very popular religion among the the uh, the Romans, which might give you an idea of why Christianity somehow came along. I don't want to really. Uh, get into that now because I respect everybody's belief but I uh, just want you to know uh, where these things historically by all accounts and you can read about this I'm not just making anything up uh, I think by far I've spent plenty of time uh, really con uh, by part uh, making sure that what I've learned originally from uh, my side or people that but what my people said were accurate and uh, they were not just a, a subjective or biased uh, opinions that it is because you know every every tribe wants to promote their own way oh we've been victimized and they've done shit to us and <laughs> you know we've been uh, but we were the good people we've done right so I was not just trying to look into that and uh Anyways, let's just talk about the what happened, the the story and the the sort of the principles of Zoroastrians. Um, but this is a very key thing because uh, I really pride myself in the fact that uh, we tried at least to create a a flourishing um, environment and the by largest society that is the world as it was known back then under the Persian sphere that uh you know creates a free platform for everybody to be who they want to be um as long as they don't really to object and try to perhaps uh undermine other people but yeah um so zoroastrianism there are a few principles that uh, zoroastrians hold uh, by far beyond everything else you might have seen actually from the logo of my uh channel uh basically is the idea of uh, uh, basically good thoughts? Excuse me, good, 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 uh, good thoughts. Yes, good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. 
So he basically says, you know, this is the pillar of his religion. Everything's based on being a good person. Doing good is the utmost important thing in the Zoroastrian faith. And what he also says is that we must uh, forbid Arza from lying. Lying is viewed by far one of the greatest wrong ever committed as much as some as might seem as passive or as might seem as acceptable. Um, Zoroastrianism uh, also says, uh, Zoroastrian says, uh, there's only one way and that is the right way. You know, there's no way. You can only stay in the right track to lead to the right place. You can't go around zigzagging, going off the track and still be able to somehow, some point, merge in. I mean, you could, but technically, you haven't gone the proper path. <laughs> you know? um, it's really, I, I guess you get it more like in a really, um, perhaps in the spiritual pathway, not necessarily the the way that you might go through it through life. That is, you know, the what you commit otherwise. Um, and the uh, one uh, most important, also another thing I wanted to mention. Uh, the whole idea of incarnation. Zoroaster, by his own belief, he doesn't believe in incarnation. And uh, he believes that the souls are descended uh, uh, to, to the world and they would be uh, ascended after death and they would leave the body. Zoroastrians believe that on the uh, once the, uh, the, the, the person dies uh, within four days the, the spirit will ascend and you know will leave the body and uh, will ascend to the uh, judgment uh, place of judgment, that is, uh, they call it the Chinevat Bridge, Chinevat Bridge basically, or Polev Chinevat basically, it's funny, you might find some very interesting uh, similarities between this concept and the whole, uh, the Serat uh, Bridge in uh, Islam, uh, I wonder why, uh, but uh, yeah, so the idea is that when the spirit ascends to this bridge, um, if he's being a good person, the bridge would be by far wide and uh, very accommodating for him to cross over to the heaven or the, the resting place, if you will. Maybe I should take the heaven part out, really the resting place, the eternal place for the spirit to, to rest, I guess. Uh, or uh, if he's been a bad person, the bridge will become very thin. Matter of fact, becomes as thin as a hair. That makes it impossible for the person to walk over it, and that person will fall into a uh, place of pain and suffering that you might refer to as a hell. <laughs> you know, we call it uh, duzach or uh, there's an alternative word for it, it's in Jahannam also. Um, and uh, one other thing is that in the uh, Zoroastrian faith, uh, uh, Zoroaster does not believe in uh, confession. He believes that we will pay the price for the wrongs we have committed, and we must, and we should also be rewarded for the good that we commit. There's no such a thing as com confession. And... Uh, mm, I, I, I think by far the best confession is really to change your way and become the better person. That, that is the confession that the Zoroaster uh, would suggest. Uh, and uh, your confession would be assessed by your deeds, perhaps, if anything. Uh, this is very crucial because this was one of the main factors when the Christianity rose and it became uh, uh, common in, through the Persian Empire under that statue of the Tolerance. Because a lot of people convert to Zoroastrian to Christianity uh, on the premise that if they commit a sin, they would be they can confess and they would be forgiven. But um, Zoroastrian faith does not offer. However, uh, during this time, the the Sassanids actually the priests started to try to rival um, this whole belief by creating uh, this uh, additional. Um, 
prayer to our book of prayer that is called the the patet which uh interesting enough i think the word repent in english will come from, comes from it and uh, it's basically the same concept that they were trying to tell people that oh no no one no worries we're trying to create the same issue the same thing concept in Zoroastrian as well and you don't have to become christian necessarily you can just uh go and read this uh prayer as well and you know you would be also uh, forgiven as well but yeah these are the main pillars i would say perhaps in the Zoroastrian faith very simple very easy he puts the burden of uh, perhaps choosing the right path on the individual. He doesn't have this uh, massive code of conduct, if you will, what is wrong and what is right. And, uh, you know, he encourages people to think and use their mind to make decisions. Of course, this was not always the case. And it turned to be... But it was, but you know, at least that was the doctrine that to begin with he did. And speaking of what I was just saying, I know this video is getting long, perhaps I have to break it down to a few pieces. And I think uh, I'm going to stop at some point. But what I want to say is that he, uh, he does not, uh, uh, if you will, uh, dismantle these, uh, as I said, these gods or theories, uh, and in particular Mithra is Mithra, the goddess of sun, if you will. And um, what she, what he says is that actually he believes that uh, Mithra actually uh, was, uh, along with uh, the uh, six other, uh, you know, angels. They're the ones that been help have helped the the. The, the mighty Ahura Mazda in, in trying to um, maintain, administer and maintain the world, the order in the world and try to uh, run the world. Um, we call them the uh, the seven immortal spirits or Haftam Shah Spandan. Basically, that would be the one way of saying it. And uh, these uh, seven immortal angels uh, immortal angels, yes, the immortal angels. These uh, 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 they assist the Ahura Mazda in doing his, uh, you know, maintenance and administering the world, um, creation and the maintenance of the world. Um, and uh, the thing is that by doing so, he really brought all these people under one umbrella. He tried to tell them that, you know what, uh, basically it's not that we're not trying to distance you, we're not trying to alienate you, we're bringing everybody in the same umbrella, basically. And I think that was one of the most amazing things that I can think of, um, uh, you know, I think it's just very, man, it's very lit, <laughs> it's dope, right? <laughs> some people might say so yeah uh so yeah and uh i'm gonna cut it here no, i just want to really give a sense of what this whole thing is about perhaps um there's a lot of historical things that uh i can get into it later but um uh, this is some kind of a intro if you will uh how it started and uh, what is it all about um, so thank you for watching and I hope you like it if you get to see this video and you want to learn more about it I would be more than happy just let me know take care